Hi, and welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Rick. And I'm Sarah. And today we are here to taste another beer. Um, so Happy New Year's, first of all. Uh, and to ring in the new year, we're tasting the first beer of the Party Guile method that you brewed, what, three or four weeks ago? Yeah, if you might recall from the last beer video, we uh, tasted the second beer, which we did as a Trappist. Now we're tasting the first beer, which was done as just a regular pale ale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So, as you also might have recalled, the differences between the two beers were really just half the amount of hops and a different yeast. They were from the same uh, grain bill, but a little bit, uh, you know, the second running. So, uh, you know, it's not exactly as strong. This one should be slightly stronger than the last one, but other than that, it's mostly just mm -hmm. the yeast that we're going to be trying. This is the first runnings, right? And we have a nice amber color. And part of that color. is brought on because I did add some dry malt extract. Um, in order to kind of boost the body, but also boost a little bit of the alcohol levels. Uh, mm -hmm. So you get your sugars from the grains when you rinse them. If you wanted to add, you could add sugar, but you can also add dry malt extract in order to give the yeast more things to feast on. And because of the, the dry malt, you're going to get a slightly darker color. But overall, mm -hmm. I'm quite pleased with this kind of uh, orange amber, as you said. Right. And it's... um. So adding sugar, adding more DME, that both boosts the kind of malty taste of the beer or feel of the beer, but also the alcohol content, right? Correct. Exactly. In some recipes, you want to build it just the alcohol content and you can just add sugar, uh, not just your table sugars, but a, a sugars that you can buy from your homebrew supply. By adding the dry malt extract, you're adding some more sugar, but you're also adding a little bit more of a malty body to kind of give it a little bit of heft. Otherwise, it might be too mm -hmm. thin. Okay, we'll have our taste here. Mm. Ooh. Nice nose. The melon and strawberry that we were hoping for has really kind of come forward. Mm -hmm. um, this, uh, from a couple of other uh, videos ago, we talked about Earth Eagle and how we are inspired by the Huel Milan hop. Um, so that's what exactly what we were hoping to get, was to get that strawberry, slightly melon yeah, no, and I'm tasting it more too. We tasted this beer raw when uh, Rick was rinsing the keg to um, carbonate it, and I kind of picked up on a tangy quality, and Rick went, uh-oh, I hope something didn't go wrong. But that tanginess has almost completely gone away now that yeah. the carbonation's in it, and it's much sweeter. And yeah, I'm definitely getting the strawberry, on the, especially on the nose. It's really nice. It mm. came out quite well. Oh, that's lovely. Now it's been Good in job, the... honey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Um, we uh, we put this in the keg uh, probably about three or four days before our Boxing Day party, and I force carbonated it um, by using the the gas, the beer gas here. You can add that carbonation, and you do as in this case is I pumped it up to twenty psi, took it off the the, the off the gas, put it outside for a couple of days, and just occasionally rolled it. Um, mm -hmm. better brewers than I have told me that the carb, the uh, CO2 is going to be, um, absorbed better when cold. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying that method. And then after a couple of days, put it back on the tap, put it back at 20 PSI. And whenever I was down in the basement where the kegerator lives, I just give it a little shake or take it out and just do a mm -hmm. little roll. Not enough that I want to foam it up, but just enough to kind of allow the CO2 to be absorbed by the beer. Right. So what you're trying to do is dissolve the CO2 into the beer, not just use like uh, we have one of those soda stream machines and that's just adding bubbles but this is actually putting the co2 into the beer um to dissolve it in there to to make that nice creamy head see the creamy head so yeah great job again thank it's you a nice taste i'll just like to emphasize at least one more difference between the two so this is kegged the other one was bottled bottle condition bottle condition mm -hmm. so you're adding just a little bit of sugar priming sugar there to give whatever leftover of the yeast is just enough to kind of make some gases so that you have the carbonation in the bottle the one of the things you've been concerned about if you're doing this a home kegging is clean again cleanliness um, I talk about that often as far as making sure that you keep all your equipment clean. Well, the same goes with the keg. Um, you know, your, the lines, if they're not cleaned periodically, if the kegs aren't cleaned periodically, if the taps aren't cleaned periodically, you can get off flavors. Mm -hmm. um, so before we did this, I cleaned the, the, the taps and the lines as best I could using PBW. Yeah. So it has like a grittiness and I ran that through the, the lines in order to clean those lines and then I used the Star Sand, which is the sanitizer afterwards in mm -hmm. order to sanitize it. 
Yep. So that's um, one of the side, one of the ways you can have an issue is you don't keep those cleans. You're not going to get a good beer. But in this case, uh, I think we did okay. <laughs> yeah, do great. So again, cheers. Um, we will link to everything uh, that Rick mentioned in terms of the um, party dial brewing style that he used, um, the the kind of inspiration for the these two beers that we've been tasting um, and other notes in the show notes. Um, so you can click through to those below. And thanks again. Uh, be sure to tune in next time. We will have more beer recipes, beer notes, and interviews with other local brewers coming up soon. So, Happy cheers. New Year. Happy cheers. New Year. Mm. That's good. <laughs>